finals are finally over, and that means it's time for Christmas break. Bah humbug. Oh, God, don't tell me. I don't like Christmas. All right, I quit. That's it. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Real Deal, Ball State's premier entertainment news show. I'm your host, Gabby Kramer. And I'm Owen DeWeese, but I have officially quit. I'm sorry, Owen, but I just don't like Christmas. Please say this is some sort of improv thing. Of course it's not. Improv is a serious art form. Christmas is just another holiday. Yeah, all right. I need backup. What are you going to do? Call your mom? She won't be happy to know that we all use our Hulu account. Threaten me all you want, but I am calling your worst enemy. Please don't say this is some sort of ghost. Halloween is over. The ghost bit isn't funny anymore, and I thought we straight up killed them off. That was the intro arc, Ghosts. These are our special festive guest stars. Uh, the first one is the ghost of pre-production. No more ghost. I'm all for committing to the bit, but this is going too far. It's too late. I already sent them a text. They're on their way. And we are going to be on our way to our first segment. Hey again. Well, guess what, guys? I am finally back with another episode of Drew Goes to the Movies. I know that everyone watching and everyone here at The Real Deal were just itching for another one. Well, I'm happy to say that we got just that for you today, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to send it off to Drew from the past for another episode of Drew Goes to the Movies. Cue the clip. Drew Goes to the Movies. All right, Real Deal folks. Popcorn review time here at AMC 17 Indianapolis. We're going to see... Castle in the Sky, um, which I've already seen before, but it's 35th anniversary, so that's pretty cool. Um, we've got some popcorn here. We're going to try it out. One bite, everybody knows the rules. It's pretty salty. Not going to lie. Um, again, like with some other popcorn, it's not very warm, um, but overall it's pretty solid, honestly. Um, Good crunch to it, pretty salty, but you know, I like that. Let me see the bag. Yeah, this is way better than the one at the uh, the IMAX for no time to die. So overall, probably thinking like a, a 7.5. .7 All right, so now we just review the popcorn. We're gonna kick it off feature Drew with film review. Catch you guys later. Drew went to the movies. Thanks again, Drew, for the popcorn review. That one was definitely a contender for the one of the best popcorns I've had since the beginning of this series. Now that we have the popcorn review finished, let's talk about what I saw recently, Castle in the Sky. I would like to preface also that I have seen this movie already, but that does not mean that I found new things that slipped past me the first time I watched it. Also, I just really enjoy this one, so of course I would enjoy talking about it today. Castle in the Sky is the very first animated film produced by the Japanese animation powerhouse that is Studio Ghibli. It was released on August 2nd, 1986, and has since become a favorite among many people all around the world. Written and directed by the incredible Hayao Miyazaki, Castle in the Sky tells a tale of a boy and a girl who set off on a journey to find a hidden castle, well, in the sky. A young girl named Shida wears a crystal necklace that holds the power to locate a floating castle called Laputa. There are promises of more wealth than can ever be imagined. Knowing this, she is kidnapped by military colonel Muska, which is dubbed by Mark Hamill in the English version, and is forced to help them find this city. She doesn't want others to find Lapida to take, or to take the crystal from her because while the crystal can do such great wonders, it can also do great evil. She flees from them and finds herself falling literally into the hands of a young minor boy named Pasu. The two begin to run away and escape from the military searching for Shida and the crystal she carries, as well as a group of pirates called the Dolagain who wish to use the crystal to see if Laputa is actually real. Now, what I really enjoyed about this film is just how incredible and beautiful the animation looks, even for the late 80s where much of the animation during that time feels very dated. Watching this in a movie theater with the surround sound and the big screen, I think didn't help accentuate the flaws in this movie, which I think there is little to none of, but to really show how well Cast in the Sky holds up, even for day today's standards. Visually alone, this movie was an absolute treat to watch. I also really enjoy the characters as well. 
Pazu really especially shows great bravery and courage when it means protecting Shida from others. However, I felt that Muska's character as the main villain was a little cheesy and basic. Uh, he wants the crystal so he can rule the world. That's about it. It is sort of a boring idea of a villain and nothing really stands out about him. Although Mark Hamill is a fantastic voice actor and he does a really good job at voicing the antagonist. In the end, Castle in the Sky was just as good seen at this time as it was the first time I watched it. The movie theater really helped to make the world of Castle in the Sky feel more immersive and I really had a blast with it. And as my girlfriend said to me after seeing it, that was a good movie. So I definitely think it's a great watch for everyone. That's all I have for you guys this week. I'm Drew Schuler. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and I will see you all in the next one. First of all, Drew, lovely as always. Second of all, they're here. You rang? Behold, the ghost of pre-production. Um, that's Chrissy. The ghost of pre-production. I thought we already established that Chrissy doesn't do anything because she's married. So I heard that you were mean to little kids and yell at them to get off your yard. Uh, what's going on? As the ghost of pre-production, I will show you what life would be like if you continue acting the way you do. Firstly, why is everyone yelling? Secondly, is this still because I missed writer's room? Yes, yes it is. You have to learn to be better. So you're saying you hate me? Yes, the first step in pre-production is establishing boundaries. And that's all I can teach you, my child. You've taught me nothing. Toodaloo. That was a really good learning experience. I hope that you and you learned something valuable. Uh, uh, uh. And now on to our next segment. For the Christmas show, I decided to look at the impressive seven Christmas episodes of one of my favorite shows, The Office. Starting off at number seven is my least favorite, Christmas Wishes, from season eight. This episode is the first Christmas without Michael, so that already sets it back. On top of that, the episode focuses on Aaron being jealous of Andy and his new girlfriend. It's pretty repetitive and annoying, and there aren't a lot of redeeming qualities. Season six, Secret Santa. This episode is the one where Phyllis asks to be Santa, and Michael throws a tantrum and ruins the party. This one is toward the bottom of the list because it's very similar to the plot of the costume party episode, plays Phyllis with Daryl, and being Santa with going over Michael's authority, and there you go. Both of them have Michael not getting his way during a holiday party, and pouting. Season nine, Dwight Christmas. If you like Dwight's weird, true family traditions, then this is the episode for you. This episode has Belsnickel, Dwight's off-brand Santa. Everyone is dubbed impish and given a smack on the head or admirable and given a present. This one is from season nine, so it's not off to a great start and Dwight is pretty much the only highlight of this episode. Season five, Moroccan Christmas, involves Phyllis in charge of the party planning committee as part of her blackmailing Angela for sleeping with Dwight, even though she's engaged to Andy. Okay, saying, saying that out loud sounds really soap opera-y, but Dwight is also scamming negligent parents with his monopoly on the year's hottest toy, Princess Unicorn, whose horn can pierce the sky. Meredith also gets so drunk and lights her hair on fire, which then inspires Michael to stage an intervention. Overall, pretty good episode. Season seven, classy Christmas, since Holly's Michael's ex is returning from Nashua, he decides to throw a classy Christmas party complete with one bassist for the entire day instead of an entire quartet for half an hour. Daryl's daughter Jada visits the office and passes out gifts from the vending machine and Dwight and Jim start an increasingly violent snowball fight. The fight ends when Dwight says that the greatest snowball isn't a snowball at all, it's fear. Holly's one of my favorite characters and she's only in a couple episodes so this is why this is ranked number three. The penultimate best Christmas episode is season two, episode 10, Christmas Party. The very first Christmas episode is a fan favorite. Michael, unimpressed that he receives an oven mitt when he bought an iPod, changes the secret Santa to Yankee Swap, which makes his employees mad, and Michael says the iconic line, happy birthday, Jesus, sorry your party's so lame. After upsetting the office, Michael buys 15 handles of vodka to get 20 people drunk. This is also the episode where Pam gets the teapot from Jim uh, with a series of bonus presents, which may or may not include a letter of Jim's feelings about Pam. Finally, at number one is season three, A Benihana Christmas. Not only is this the best Christmas episode, but it is also one of the best, period. Each of the characters has a chance to shine. Pam and Karen become friends, feuding with Angela. 
Michael and Carol break up because of his uncomfortable Photoshop job on his Christmas card. We also get Dwight getting tricked into thinking he's being recruited by the CIA. Angela sings the Little Drummer Boy for the first time, and Michael says the Ho No Mo line. Every year, I make a tradition of watching all the Christmas episodes, all of these episodes to get me in the holiday spirit, except this year, because they're no longer on Netflix. For Office fans everywhere, I'm Noel Bush. Amazing segment. Please tell me that was the extent of the reinforcements you called in. I'm not done. So. Drew 2! Oh, I see. You're just having the producers talk about how much they hate me. So you do get it. Okay, okay, so what is your whole deal? Well, I'm a Pisces sun and moon, and then a Virgo rising. No, 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 the Christmas thing. Oh, oh, the Christmas cream thing. Okay, so I am the ghost of production. I thought you were the designated denim jacket wearer. Oh, only on Tuesdays. It is Tuesday. He's a multitasker. Thank you, Owen. And now for my bit of wisdom. Don't suck. Don't suck. Thank you. You're so welcome. And before our last bringer of wisdom arrives onto our next segment... There's another one? Yes, there is. I don't know about you, Kat, but I am so ready for finals to be over. I am so ready for finals to be over. Do you have any fun plans? Any new movies? Yeah, I am going to be seeing Spider-Man No Way Home on Friday night, and then on Saturday, I'm driving to Cleveland for our Machine Gun Kelly show. I've had these tickets for about eight months, and I am super excited. It's going to be a really busy weekend for me but I'm so excited. That's, that's just so great. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it because I will be working so you have fun doing actual fun Yay, stuff. I'm gonna try. Instead of being at a Jimmy John's yeah. until you die. But what I am looking forward to is the new Spider-Man movie. I am mainly looking forward to this because my sister, name drop sister here, <laughs> is a big Tom Holland fan like has posters of Tom Holland on her bedroom I love wall. That. Only like Spider-Man cause Tom Holland's in it type of person. Oh. But I actually like Marvel movies so I understand what's happening. Good. So she, you know, she cried during Endgame and I was did. so happy. <laughs> Not Infinity War, but still. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Um, I'm also excited for the new Spider-Man movie. I have a lot of rumors that um, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield are also going to be in it. What yeah. are your thoughts on that? Are you excited? I, Tobey Maguire, drew one. Andrew Garfield, <laughs> drew two. two. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> we figured it out! We cracked the code, we, ladies We and know gentlemen. it. Okay, we're going to have to ask them, see if they confirm that if they're in the movie or not. Because I... Would be, I'm going to be so disappointed if it doesn't happen. Me too. It'll be earth shattering. Speaking of Drew number one, I'm really hoping that he does a segment on the new movie. Oh, wink, wink. Uh, Drew goes to the, the movies. movies. <laughs> yes, that. <laughs> well, that has been here all for us, so we'll, we'll see you next time. Happy New Year. Here's where things get excellent. Have they not been? Well, now you have me. Oh, uh, hi, Jamie. I mean, <clears throat> who are you? I am the ghost of post-production. I can change the course of the whole show with just some simple editing. For example, or. That's so awesome. I bring life. <laughs> OK, you're actually pretty cool. <laughs> this could be you. Whoa. <laughs> the power of editing is so intense. It is everything and more. Watch this. I think I get it now. The true meaning of Christmas. As you should. Through the ghosts of pre-production, production, and post-production, you can see what I see. And just with enough time for our final words. Since this is our holiday special for the year, I thought I'd talk about the classic Christmas movie, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. I know not everyone celebrates Christmas, but this is just a great movie that brings out the wintry holiday feeling in everyone. It's Christmas time, and the Griswolds are preparing for their whole family to come over and celebrate, but things never work out correctly for Clark, his wife Ellen, or their two kids. Clark's never-ending bad luck is made even worse by his obnoxious family, but he manages to keep going knowing that his Christmas bonus is coming in the mail soon, and that there's a big, beautiful backyard pool to look forward to. 
This movie's pretty hard to sum up in just a couple sentences, but that's the main idea. A lot happens, and there's a lot of stuff hidden throughout that you'll just need to rewatch to see, like this stuff. The Griswold family's house was used for the was used for the house in 2021's WandaVision. I'm not sure how sneaky they are with trying to hide that, but it's on IMDb, so they can't be trying too hard. The old Dodge pickup that tailgated Clark and the family in the start of the movie was previously used as Kurt Russell's work truck in the 1987 movie Overboard and 1988's classic They Live. Here's a fun one that'll make your uh, hand hurt. In the scene where Clark is trying to get Christmas lights to turn on, he fails really bad, and he starts to take out his frustration on the plastic decorations in the front yard. Chevy Chase actually broke his pinky finger while punching the plastic Santa Claus. Even though they reshot the scene, the director liked it so much, that's what we see in the movie. Anyway, that's all the fun I have for you, so let's see what Gabby has for us. Guess what I got? More Christmas movies! Whoa! <laughs> Happy holidays and Merry Christmas to all who celebrate. Full disclaimer, I do really enjoy Christmas. I was threatened with my life to pretend that I hate the holiday for script purposes. Anyways, now that finals are wrapping up and my stress levels are starting to even out, I am feeling a surplus of happiness. And what more joyful than Christmas movies? You're right. Nothing. Nada. I'm going to go ahead and rank for you my top five favorite Christmas movies. In fifth place, we have an ultimate classic, Grandma Got Ran Over by a Reindeer. This story has been one of my favorites forever just because of how utterly insane it is. I want to know what happened to cause the creator to think of a whole Christmas story based around the idea that someone's grandma got ran over by Santa. Disclaimer, San Grandma's okay, so this is a good film to watch with the whole fam. Moving on to the fourth place. We've got the classic, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I really love this movie, especially due to the animation style of it. I always get so excited to see it come on because it brings such a feeling of nostalgia. Ugh, love it. Alrighty, moving on to the top three. Let's go. We have How This Grinch Stole Christmas in third place. For this movie, I am, of course, talking about the original cartoon version. The drawings and the songs. Yeah, I mean, you're a mean one, Mr. Grinch never fail to bring a smile on my face and honestly this movie could be ranked anywhere in my top three and i would agree with the placement on to number two the ultimate classic elf who doesn't love will ferrell and what a classic movie so many quotable lines bye buddy i hope you find your dad and this movie is just one i never fail to watch during the christmas season this brings me to my number one favorite christmas movie a christmas story I might be biased considering this is my mom's favorite Christmas movie, but I do always get so excited to watch this movie with my whole family on Christmas Eve. I cannot really explain why it's my favorite, but I would be lying if I said the line fragile, must be Italian, was not a big reason for my love for the film. I apologize if any of the movies I have listed you have not seen, but if you celebrate Christmas, I am confident you have. Do you agree with my list? I don't really care, but hey, I'd love to know your guys' favorite Christmas movies. Alrighty, Owen, let's wrap this up so I never have to say the word Christmas this many times again. Sounds good. As always, thank you for watching. If you want to see anything else from us here at The Real Deal, be sure to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and our website for all things entertainment. Be sure to enjoy your break and enjoy your family's holidays and traditions. I'm Owen DeWeese. And I'm Gabby Kramer. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So you're bringing out all of the producers to do cute little things and you didn't invite us? It's okay. We've, we've done this a few times. Yeah, so I, I think we're just too good for you. What? <laughs>